Well, my piece in Glakul has been accused of taking 2.3 million rand in bribes from a defence contract contractor while she was the Minister of Defence. Also during her time as Defence Minister, she was found to have allowed ANC leaders to use a military plane to fly to Zimbabwe. Erica Gibson is a defence writer, someone with immense experience uh, covering the SANDF. Erica, good afternoon to you and thanks for your time. How would you describe my piece in Glakul's track record while she was the Minister of Defence? Good afternoon, Stephen. Um, I would say that she took over from Lindiwe Sisulu in 2012, and she was appointed by Jacob Zuma. Um, she was uh, the second... Uh, it, it, she, was, she took over as Minister of Defence a, a year after General Sh uh, Soli Shoki was also appointed as Chief of the Defence Force uh, by, by Jacob Zuma. It was a difficult time. The defence budget was decreasing annually, and... Um, she took over with not a very great record um, while serving as uh, the Minister of Home Affairs. So it was it was quite a surprise that she was appointed as uh, the Minister of Defence, being a very very difficult beast to um, to lead. She had no military background. She had no uh, uh, idea really of of of, of what the Defence Force was all about. Uh, the first term was not bad, uh, but it was really in the second term, uh, her second term, um, that, that everything um, fell apart quite badly. Um, during her tenure, she, she obviously also had to deal with uh, some, some very difficult issues, the Gupta landing. Um, it was uh, in that time that we uh, had to face, the, our soldiers had to face the Battle of Bangui. Uh, in which 15 soldiers uh, were killed, um, and then, of course, the uh, the, the, the the now infamous uh, trip to Zimbabwe. Uh, before that, uh, she she was involved in um, necessarily smuggling uh, a, a girl from from Bangui, uh, no, from from Burundi to South Africa on board a military plane. So it was um, it, it it she 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 had a. a, a a less than good track record uh, before the final incident um, when she took a delegation from, from the ANC to Zimbabwe on board a military plane under the pretext that, that she was actually going there uh, for a, a meeting with a counterpart uh, in Zimbabwe, uh, which was a smokescreen. Mm. Um, and mm. that, uh, that, that was the final nail in her coffin. Um, as far as uh, President Ramaphosa was concerned. There were a lot of things that were happening during, in the South African National Defence Force during uh, the pandemic. We had more soldiers out on the streets than we'd ever had before. Um, there was also at the same time, as you refer to, that flight uh, involving ANC leaders. Uh, there was also sort of deals with Cuba. I think there was a sort of importation of a, of a, a medicine that was supposed to deal with COVID-19. That had never actually been registered. Um, as I understand it, the SANDF was going to pay millions of rand. Um, to Cuba. I mean, it was quite a strange situation. Was she involved in that at all? Or was that actually nothing to do with her? Whether she was involved or not, it happened under her watch. Uh, the, the deal with the Cubans actually started in 2014 already, when um, we uh, uh, appointed the Cuban uh, mechanics to come and uh, repair the, uh, the Defence Force's uh, uh, vehicles. Um, well, the la by the last check, there were 30,000 vehicles um, uh, sitting in scrapyards all over the place, um, being totally unserviceable, uh, beyond economical repair. So that contract, uh, which was severely con uh, uh, um, yeah, criticized, and it still is, um, it it. it literally rendered the, the military vehicles useless in the sense that they were taking different parts off different vehicles and so on. It, 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 it was just, it was, uh, it, it, was, it was a mess from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And it did not achieve. It was so expensive uh, to, to actually repair one vehicle. Um, the, the, the whole contract in the end, um, and it's supposed to come to an end soon, um, it cost the defence force in the region of about three billion rand, and we have very little to show for it. 
that happened under her watch. And then, of course, there was the, the Hebron um, uh, uh, medicine that they imported from, from Cuba um, without ha- having the ne- necessary um, a- approval from the med- Medicine Control Board, and which in the end was destroyed. Uh, the official line, uh, line was that it was sent back to Cuba, but it, it was destroyed because it um, nobody really wanted it. Um, and some of it expired in the meantime as well. So uh, it all happened under her watch. Um, I mean, there are a lot of things that are happening. So, so as I understand um, the sort of bare facts of the case against Mapis and Kalkul, and we haven't heard her version yet, uh, that will come during the trial. If there is one, I presume there will be one. Um, but basically, she is accused of receiving 2.3 million rand from a defence contractor who I presume was getting contracts with the SA and DF. Now... What that presumes then is that the minister at the time was playing an active role in determining who got contracts and who didn't. And to add to this, as you know better than I do, Eric, because you're the expert, not me, um, in fact, this defence contractor is married to someone who's very senior in the South African National Defence Force. So we have a person who would make money from providing services of some kind to the Defence Force, who's married to a senior official in the Defence Force, and then, according to the NPA, paying money to the defence minister. And this is quite a picture that's being painted. Yeah, exactly how, how that whole, uh, let's call it a deal, uh, was put together, um, I suppose it will come out in the wash um, as the, the case is, is, is proceeding. Um, because there's, uh, there's also another general um, who, who are implicated in, in the, the whole thing. So... One of the, the, the middlemen or the middleman uh, initially was uh, the former uh, Secretary of Defence, Dr. Sam Gluby. Uh, unfortunately, he, um, he has died in the meantime. And initially it was channeled through Gluby. So I, I can't tell you exactly how, how, the, how the deals work that the minister would benefit from it, except that uh, Gulubi is, is, uh, uh, was the uh, Secretary of Defence in charge of the finances of the uh, Defence Force. So, so uh, somehow the, 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 the scheme involved Sam Gulubi, and then at some stage, uh, apparently the minister, former minister said um, she and um, uh, the, the defence contractor must deal directly with one another and sort of bypass Sam Gulubi. Um, I have to say that at the time, and even before that, corruption is probably the, the, the one legacy that she left behind because corruption in the defence force took hold during her tenure and it's it's absolutely gone totally beyond. Um, um, uh, it's it, it's 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 gone wild. Uh, the the auditor general uh, every year when she, when she gives feedback uh, is 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 commenting on it. The defence force uh, haven't or the Department of Defence haven't had a, a, a clean audit um, for for many years. And and the corruption and the fruitless expenditure and and that sort of thing it 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 really uh, sort of took hold under her um, uh, uh, while she was serving as, as as minister. Is it having an impact on our soldiers in the DRC now? There's a city press story um, suggesting that 600 soldiers are sharing six toilets. We spoke to the South African National Defence Force spokesperson, Sophia Dlamini. I'm sure you have a complicated relationship with him, Erica, but we spoke to him yesterday and I asked him the question if this was true. I never quite got a straight answer. But, I mean, is there a relationship between the corruption that you speak of um, and what we've seen, I I suppose, maybe with the former speaker, maybe not, and the situation facing our soldiers now, six toilets, 600 people? The the Defence Force is just totally overburdened. And I've always maintained that the last Minister of Defence, uh, there were actually two, who really put up a hell of a fight as far as what the Defence Force can do, what it needs, and how to how it was uh, uh, to be applied by government, 
um, was firstly Joe Medici, because he understood how the defence force worked. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to comment on, on, on whatever he did wrong as well, but uh, I'm just talking about uh, keeping the, the welfare of, of, of the soldiers at heart. Um, and after him, Lakota, uh, Lakota's first term, he also um, uh, understood what the defence force was all, all about. Since then, the, the ministers, in reality, be, became figureheads. The, 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 the generals were doing what they, and they still are, doing what they want. And uh, the minister is, is sitting in the middle, just sort of uh, being in the post. Not, not really fighting for the rights and, and what they can and what they can't do. Now, according to my information, with this latest deployment, uh, the ill-fated one in, in the DRC, um, there was also almost a, a, a mini-revolt amongst the service chiefs. Uh, those are the different arms of the Defence Force, the Navy, uh, Army, Air Force and, and Medical Service, because they said they, it, it, there was no way that we can take on another deployment. And for some other reason, this can't be, uh, this isn't part of, of, of what Nosifi Mapisa and Gakula um, uh, had a share in. But it, it, uh, the, the Defence Force have basically become a stopgap that government just uses as it wants to, when it wants to, and how. And the Defence Force can't. Um, the Defence Budget has been shredded to a, 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 a 0.6% of GDP. Um, and that was from from uh, uh, 94, I think it was 3.3 and, and, and higher. Um, the defense force can't anymore. There is just no way. We The, the vehicles fall apart. The vehicles are 40 years uh, and, and older. We don't have a serviceable fleet of, 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 of aircraft at the moment. Um, there are two Oryx helicopters serviceable. Uh, you know, it, 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 it doesn't happen overnight. It happens over time. And I think a lot of it started happening when, when, when she was still the minister and, and when the beast just became too big to handle. And nobody really put their foot down and said, no more. The Defence Force just cannot uh, do this. Um, and unfortunately, uh, that is, uh, the soldiers are the ones to, uh, to suffer, uh, like the ones currently in the DRC, and I feel extremely sorry for them, because I don't know, there's, there's no way in hell that the Defence Force will, will reach 2,900 troops mm -hmm. that it committed to the, to the Congo. It, it, it can't even handle 600. How does it want to do, uh, handle 2,900? Um, so it's a it's a it's a sad state it's a it, it, it's a sad decline that that hasn't been stopped and and it's it's just uh, you know the you get a point of no return sure. and um, I'm not being pessimistic if if I say I think the defence force have reached a point of no return it is it's it's just downhill from here on and the leadership unfortunately don't have the balls to stand to 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 say, to say no more we can't we just can't anymore erica gibson thank you defense writer really appreciate the view here on newsfeed